Hey everybody and welcome back. Hope you guys' Thursday was pretty good. I can't believe it's Friday already and I'm going to have two American Truck Simulator videos up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. If you guys want to check those out, that'd be greatly appreciated or whatever. If you guys want to not check them out, that's fine too. It's up to you guys. Alright, so looks like Ark Survival of the Fittest is going to be coming to the PS4 on July 19th. It's been on the PC for about a month already, I guess, and it's going to have cash prizes, invitational tournaments, and dinosaurs as far as the eye can see. Survival of the Fittest was built on the ground up to be a fully competitive action, and we are bringing it to the PS4 players on July 19th, is what uh, the developers said for this game. Now, you basically spawn, like, nude, and it's basically you have to fend for yourself and survive, like, with everything, you know, like, like, uh, arrows or anvils or whatever, you got, like, whatever, there's maybe, there's a few guns, like, sniper rifles and all that good stuff, but it's not gonna be anything in, like, major, so, there's that, you know. They said basically one thing is about the multiplayer console is a huge pool of players are all playing on the same hardware, so it makes things more competitive and fair for everybody, basically, is what they said, which is pretty cool, and, you know, there's no question the user will be able to play on lower settings for better frames per second, so it looks like you can be able to adjust the frames and hardware and everything for the game to run better on the console if you're going to take a lower resolution for it to, have it to have it have more frames. It looks like that's an option in this one. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, it looks like a pretty cool addition to the PS4 lineup, uh, Ark Survival of the fittest is coming and you know that's all right but i wish the original art game was still coming to the playstation 4 but i don't know if xbox has like an exclusive deal with them to come to have it i know it's on steam but i mean for console wise i don't know but it looks really interesting and cool so there's all that news for arc survival or survival of the fittest you know that doesn't sound as much fun to me as the art game the art game original was way better this is basically just like more of an mmo style game really is what it is well, it looks like uh, Xbox One sales have been released, and it's around 18 million units. And they said it's basically a 2-to-1 sale uh, thing for both consoles, where the PS4 is also on the Xbox One 2-to-1 is pretty much it. So apparently uh, Neville Upton, head of uh, Infinity, or Jefinity, we are delighted to announce the launch of our Tournament Builder app on the Xbox One, which will enhance the Jefinity offering and enable us to reach Xbox One 18 million users, users globally is where that came out. Uh, I don't know where he got that number, but it looks like he knows some insight that people don't. But, I mean, they said we don't know how accurate it is because he could just, you know, make his own claim, and Microsoft is pretty, you know, hush-hush on their sales numbers as well. But he did come out and say that 18 million sales figure was based on external numbers made public previously. The statement sent to GameSpot, you know, said, uh, Jafinity would like to clarify that it is not, not sought to confirm Microsoft sales figures. The comments in the statement today is based on a variety of independent sources published earlier this year. So it looks like he might have got the number from somewhere else, like earlier in the year when they released the numbers, like somewhere along the lines apparently they did. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, it looks like the Xbox One potentially has only sold 18 million, which honestly isn't that good, but I mean, it's still a pretty big number, but it's still not the best. Alright, so this last piece of news here that I'm talking about is about No Man's Sky, and if you guys haven't heard of this game, you must be living under a rock. But uh, this game looks insanely awesome. I cannot wait for it to release on the PlayStation 4. Uh, still not sure if you need PlayStation Plus or not for the game, but regardless, uh, IGN is covering this game all this month, and if you guys want to check it out, go to IGN's YouTube channel or something. I'll post the link maybe in the description if I can remember. Uh, they go through No Man's Sky and everything like that, and they did five of the beautiful planets, and they did, like, one was, like, a really hot planet where it was, like, whatever. One was, like, toxic rain or toxic acid coming down, and there's all different things that you can do on these planets as well. Really freezing cold planet, and there's, like, an Earth planet, and there's another planet. I can't really remember what it was. I just watched the video, and I can't remember, honestly, what it is. It's pretty sad, guys. But, yeah, it's, the planets look really, really good, and I guess there's so much I want to talk about on this game, but I don't want to make this video 100,000 years long. But one thing I really want to talk about is, like, the scale of this entire thing, okay? So the scale of this, like, each planet or whatever is the size of an actual planet. So, like, it's going to be the size of Earth. So how do they expect people to discover all these planets? I don't, they don't expect you to, but, I mean, realistically, like, are you going to land on a planet, find a couple things, all right, I got to leave and go to the next planet? Probably not. I'll probably end up staying on that same planet for a while, figuring out, you know, what I like, what I don't like, all that things come into play with this game. Now, it does look also interesting with, you got different creatures and you can name your own planet and whatever, that's kind of old news. But another thing that I, th I thought was really cool in one of the videos was how he shot into the ground, because it was a freezing cold planet, I think it was like a negative 163 degrees uh, Celsius, and 
he shot into the ground and there was a cave. Like he could go in a cave and it was like, you know, 26 degrees Celsius, which is, you know, warm temperature. So that's really cool stuff. Like, and there's nothing unlimited in this game is what everybody's saying or there. John Murray even said himself, nothing is unlimited. Yeah. If you need ammo for your gun, you need to craft it. If you need more like ship upgrades, you need to craft or trade. Same goes for fuel. Same goes for pretty much everything that you need in this game. Nothing's unlimited, which is I personally really like. Makes the game more interactive and fun. Now, I don't think this game is going to be, uh, it's going to be awesome, but I don't think anybody's really going to discover that many planets. Like, unless you're just going to try to go to the center of, of the universe right away, which they're not releasing what it is or anything like that. But it's one of those things where, all right, you know, you don't have enough resources to get to the center of the universe, so you got to upgrade. So I don't know if anybody's ever actually going to reach it, unless you just play this game nonstop, which I wouldn't put it past anybody. But I'll probably play this game for hours. I'll probably even live stream it for you guys. All right, well, that's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video. Make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. I will talk to you guys on tomorrow's uh, American Truck Simulator stream. So, all right, see you guys again on Monday for some more gaming news.